Monet, like most Impressionist painters, will also work in the urban environment of Paris, as we will see with Saint Lazare train station. And you have to put yourself in the period. This is very similar to Joseph Wright and the philosopher giving a lecture at the orrery that we saw during the Enlightenment. He's looking at the latest form of technology, and he's not the only one. Of course, many of the Impressionists will be drawn to the railroads, and they're fairly new. It's starting in about 1850. You see railroads being laid not only in the United States, but throughout Europe. It's a new form of technology, a new form of transportation. And this becomes an integral part of their work. The reason is it's the ultimate fleeting moment. The modern example would be, say, an airport like O'Hare. You could imagine sitting there at TSA watching that line at 8 a.m. every day, and it's never going to be the same. The aircraft on the ground will not all be the same. Of course, schedules change, things are late and early and everything else. Not only that, but it really is a very hurried place, just like an airport. No one's ever there calm, relaxed, kind of comfortable. You don't hang out at an airport. Well, most people don't. Instead, we're always rushing through it. We're worried that we're going to be late for our flight. We're worried that we're not going to get to the gate on time. Any number of different things. We're taking off our shoes so that TSA can look at them. We're, you know, whatever else they want to look at. So he's capturing the same thing, that very fleeting moment that you get in these very specific places. It's not the same as a haystack, where the haystack will always be there while the light is fleeting and changing. Here, the entire environment changes on a regular basis. So most Impressionist scenes depict images of Paris and the surrounding area, and the train station is an integral part of that by 1877. The speed and agitation of Monet's brushwork will contribute to this very hurried feeling of the station. So as we look at it, there are three things that we're looking at. After all, this is Impressionism. So is he capturing a fleeting moment? Yes, because of course this will not repeat again. We will not have all of these cars and engines in the same place, much less the people, the atmosphere, the colors, etc. But secondly, he's looking at light and color, focusing on that skylight up above for a moment. Look at the ballast down below. As the sun comes through the skylight, it interacts with the stone of the ballast. In the highlights, we see an orange tone, whereas the shadows tend to be a little bit on the blue side. That's the warm highlight and cool shadow. And he's using uh, contrasting colors to do it. A little bit of orange, a little bit of blue. You don't set up pure, perfect colors here to do it unless you were a fauve, and we'll get to them later. But instead, he's trying to capture just how that light interacts. What does it do? And of course, this is the sort of thing that you worry about when you're outdoors rather than in a studio. Then we have the smoke up in the upper left. Uh, as it passes through the light passing through that skylight, you'll see it turn sort of a white color. Otherwise, it tends towards the blue when it's in shadow. Again, that idea of how the light is interacting with an object, in this case, the steam. Finally, the buildings in the background. All of these buildings are using that same warm highlight, cool shadow. So here we see a yellow, sort of orangish highlight with a blue shadow. And he's again playing with this. He's experimenting. He's seeing how he can best depict the world around us as we would see it. How can he be as accurate as humanly possible? Now, in terms of interpretation, it's really a trick question. There's no narrative. There's no big metaphor. There's no great lesson apart from don't stand on train tracks while creating a painting. Instead, what he gives us is just an image. I don't want to say just an image, but it's an image that exists for aesthetic reasons, not for narrative reasons, not for some grandiose abstract thought. And this is very different than what we've been dealing with up until this point. There's always been a story in almost all paintings up until now. The Impressionists are really going to change that through their studies of fleeting moments, light, and color.